Today, let's talk about hover effects inside of Framer. Hover effects give your website a polished and professional look and feel, and they're actually really easy to do. So today I'll be teaching you my technique on how to create these effects inside of Framer. And once you learn it, you can apply this to cards, different elements within your page, buttons, no matter what it is, the concepts remain the same. As for who I am, my name is Danny Sapio. I'm a senior product designer and Framer partner, and I'm excited to show you guys how to do this today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and jump inside of Framer and I'll show you guys how we can do some of these different hover effects. Um, so the file that I'm going to be using for this, you guys can remix it down below and you can also go to hovers.framer.website and this will show you just a whole bunch of different examples of things that we can do right inside of the Framer interface without using any code. And I'm going to teach you guys how to do this today. So you can see we've got all these cool different effects. Um, go and check them out and maybe when you're seeing this tutorial there will be even more because in the future um, Maybe I'll add some extra ones as I get inspired There's also another technique that I'll be showing today called overrides And this is just a very simple code snippet that you can copy and paste inside of your framer file And it allows you to unlock some really cool effects that you might not be able to do just right inside of the canvas but just to start off, let's focus on variants and using the canvas to create some cool hover effects. So let's create some text. I'm just gonna write out button real quick. Um, and I wanna change this text so I can see it. Let's use white. And we'll go ahead and put this inside of a stack. So you can press Option, Command, Return, and that's gonna create a stack for us. I'm gonna update this color. And then if you press Shift-A, That'll change the width and height to be fit. And then we'll just add a little bit of padding here. So 16 pixels should work. And then this is gonna be your button, so you can style it however you want, if you wanna add some radius or however you like it. And now the technique that I'll be using today actually requires another stack around this. So just take this button that we've just created and do the exact same thing we just did. Press Option, Command, Return if you're on a Mac and shift A to make sure that it's hugging our contents and then we'll just remove the fill. So now on that outer container, we can turn the whole thing into our button component. So now that we have this button, I'm gonna show you real quick the first one which is just a hover um, and float effect. So on hover, the button will float up by 10 pixels and then when the cursor leaves, it will float back down. It's a very simple one to do. So in order to achieve this, we'll just come in here and add a hover effect. So on our main button component, we just wanna make sure that our height is set to fixed and we want our overflow set to visible. And I'm just going to add a little bit of padding on our hover variant so that it pops up. So on the bottom, we can add 10 pixels and that'll make it float up nicely. And if we go ahead and play this, you'll see that on hover, very simply, without using any code, we are just able to make our button float up, float back down. So it's kind of a cool effect, very subtle, but it gives a nice little polish. Uh, I do really like this effect. You might also want to do one more thing and just add a cursor style. So under the styles, you can add this pointer um, and that just makes your button look actually clickable. Okay, so that's the first effect. That's our float on hover. The next one that I wanna show is very similar. We'll just go back into the same um, one that we just had, and I'll show you how to make this a little bit more 3D. Um, so in order to do this, I'm just going to invert some of the colors. So I'm gonna make that background white, and I'm gonna make my text purple. And now on our actual container, I'm going to add that purple fill and I wanna add the same amount of radius that my button has, so we'll add eight pixels. And if you also add a little bit of a border here, it'll just make it look a little bit more like it's popping out from the same thing. So you can see here, I have this kind of 3D effect. We'll come back into the file, and I'm just gonna pop this in here real quick so that we can preview it. All right, so you can see it's the exact same effect that we had before, except now it creates a 3D button effect, which is pretty cool. Um, the next one I'm gonna show you is this first one here. Um, and this is where on hover, our text kind of floats up and the other text floats back down. So in order to achieve this, 
I'll just write out some text real quick. We'll say button again, and I'm just going to duplicate it and put these inside of a stack together. So press Option Command Return, and you can press Shift A again to make sure it's fitting, and I'll remove the gap. So now on this, I'm just going to actually make the height be fixed because we want to hide that second one. And I'm just going to set distribute from start. So that's going to allow one of my texts to be on top and one of them to be on the bottom. And now on this container, again, I'm going to add another stack around it. We'll do shift A one more time. And now we'll just add a little bit of padding. So now that we have this kind of button container, what we're basically going to tell Framer is on hover, we want this, we'll call this button two, on hover, we want this text in here to go up and the other one to come back down. Super simple to do, we'll just add this hover state real quick. And I'm just going to change the distribution. So right here I have the distribution set to start. I will set it to end. And you'll notice not a single thing happened but if we come in here and preview this, it actually works quite nicely. Um, so that's another cool effect that you can do very simply inside of Framer without using any code. All right, so now that you understand how to use hover effects inside of Framer using just the canvas, I wanna show you something really cool called overrides that allow you to do some super cool different effects inside of the interface. Um, and all you have to do is copy and paste a quick code snippet so inside this remix file, you'll find a whole bunch of really cool overrides that I've added in here for you guys to try out. So if you just come down here, let's say that button that we just created, um, if you wanna add an override, you just come down here, click the plus icon, and then let's say we want wobble on this one. We just select it and without doing anything else. Framer uses that to add the effect to our button. So that's pretty awesome already. Um, and if you guys know a little bit about programming, you can create your own overrides. And if you're not sure how to do that, I have a website that I created called frameroverrides.com. And you guys can go there and get some new overrides if you'd like. And then once you have a new override, I just grabbed one from the library called Burst. So I can come over here and all I have to do is add that new override. And if I press Command V and save it, now I have a new override that I can apply. So there's no components here, there's no variance. You really don't have to do anything at all. You just apply it to your container. And now, very simply, I have this kind of neat 3D popping out burst effect. Um, so that's another technique that might help you as well when designing your website inside of Framer. Um, but yeah, these are the two techniques that you guys can use. You can let your imagination run wild and I'm really excited to see what you guys are able to create with this technique inside of Framer. All right, guys, that about does it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found some use out of it. If you guys are excited about Framer and want to learn more, be sure to join the waitlist down below. There's a link. Flex Academy is currently working on an in-depth Framer course that's going to teach you how this tool works inside and out and all the skills that you need to harness to become advanced inside of Framer. So be sure to join the waitlist below. And if there's any specific types of content that you guys would like to see about Framer, leave a comment down below and we'll do our best to make a video on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.